In this video, I will discuss how to find the domain of a function given a formula. Now, the way this is supposed to work, ideally, if somebody hands you a formula, they're supposed to also tell you what domain, what inputs they want you to use. But mathematicians are lazy. We usually don't do that. So if somebody hands you a formula, they expect you to use what's called the natural domain. And that's the largest set of real numbers that makes sense for that particular formula. Now, in real-world applications, there could be physical limitations that will restrict your domain. If your function tells you how many postage stamps to buy, you can't buy half a postage stamp. Your domain would just be whole numbers. But in mathy kind of problems, somebody hands you a formula and they want you to find the natural domain or just the domain, they mean use the largest set of real numbers that don't break any rules. And by breaking rules, we, we mean you can never divide by zero. And you can't take a square root of a negative number. Now, there are other issues we could run into later as you get further in math. You see that you can't take tangent of pi over 2. You can't take logs of 0 or negatives. More advanced functions have more complicated natural domains. But when you're starting out, the two things you need to worry about are dividing by zero and taking square roots or really any even root of a negative number. Okay, so say for example, we're given this function f of x. So somebody hands us this formula and we want to determine the domain we're supposed to use. Okay, so we look and see, is there any way I'm going to accidentally divide by zero? Well, looking through the formula, there's no division symbol anywhere. There's no way I could plug in a 7 and accidentally divide by 0. There's no dividing. So I don't have to worry about that. What about square roots? Any chance I could take a square root of a negative? There are no roots here. I don't have to worry about that. So this function has no restrictions at all. His domain is all real numbers. So we could write that in words, all reals, but we're always going to write that in interval notation whenever we can. All real numbers is the set negative infinity to infinity. That's the natural domain of this cubic function. Okay, the second function, g of x. I want to find the natural domain. I want to determine this largest set of real numbers I'm allowed to plug in for x's here. Well, I don't have to worry about square roots. There are no square roots in the function, but I do have to worry about dividing by zero. I've got a fraction here. This bottom might be zero. So I say, I'm not allowed to divide by zero. The bottom is not allowed to be zero. So x is not allowed to be 3. Just add 3 to both sides. So that's not the domain. That tells me who the bad guy is. The domain is everybody else. All real numbers except 3. So if I draw a number line here, here's 3. We illustrate that 3 is an excluded value, a bad guy, with an open circle. That gives me two regions of good guys, values I'm allowed to use. This is an interval. Intervals are always written smaller, comma, larger. The smallest number in this shaded region, this goes all the way back to negative infinity, comma, up to, when do I have to stop? I have to stop at 3. Now, I never actually touch negative infinity. So parenthesis. I can't touch the 3 because of the open circle. So parenthesis on the 3. Then over here, we have this region. Smaller, comma, larger. The smallest number in this region is a 3. I didn't actually touch it, though, so parenthesis. Comma, the largest. This goes all the way up 
to positive infinity. Again, infinity always gets parentheses. And so I have two separate sections of domain. I put a U in between them for union. That stands for union. That's the domain of this function. And that's just a fancy way of saying all real numbers except three. Okay, here in this function, I want to find the natural domain, the set of numbers I'm allowed to plug in here without breaking any of my rules. At this point, the only rules I worry about are dividing by zero. No dividing here. That's not going to play an issue. Or square roots of negatives. When we're talking about functions, we're talking about real numbers. We can't take square roots of negatives. So we take the inside, whatever is underneath here, and say it can't be negative, greater than or equal to zero. That's the mathy way of saying something is not negative. It's positive or zero. And then we solve. We know how to solve this. We just subtract 7 x then will be greater than or equal to negative 7. These are the good guys. These are the numbers I'm allowed to plug in here without taking a square root of a negative. We're going to write that again in interval notation. So say here's negative 7. I have x is greater than or equal to negative 7. We say equal to with a solid dot. And then to illustrate greater than, we would shade above 7. That's my domain. These are all the x values I'm allowed to plug in here so that I don't take a square root of a negative. So intervals are always smaller, comma larger. The smallest thing I shaded is negative 7 all the way up to, I went on forever, this goes to infinity. Did I actually touch negative 7? Yes, I have a solid dot there, so square bracket. Did I touch infinity? No, you never touch infinity. Infinity always gets a parenthesis. Oh, that's a parenthesis there. So here's the domain. Now, you might look at that and say, wait a minute. You said you can't take a square root of a negative, and you're using negative x's. No, I'm... I never said x can't be negative. I said x plus 7 can't be negative. Say we did use one of these. Say we used negative 5. Negative 5 plus 7 is positive 2. I can do square root of positive 2. So this is the domain. x values greater than or equal to negative 7.